All lathes are not standard, but most are the WW standard. Many lathes were designed and made for specific companies, and only their parts and accessories will fit those lathes. If you find one of these lathes completely tooled up, it's not a problem. But if you buy one that does not come with all the possible accessories, it will be extremely difficult to find all the parts and accessories that you'll need. You should avoid these types of lathes. For example, this lathe here is made by the Mansfield Tool Company. No collets or accessories that I have from these other two lathes uh, will fit this, this lathe. Usually lathes like these you want to avoid, uh, especially ones that were made specifically for watch companies like uh, Waltham and Elgin. Now there's three sizes of lathes, 6mm, 8mm, and 10mm. A huge percentage is of the 8mm variety. All these lathes, or these two lathes here, are uh, 8mm. This is something a little bit less than uh, 8mm, and that's why the accessories won't fit for this particular lathe. Now, finding parts and accessories are difficult for the 6mm and 10mm. Be prepared to spend a lot of money when you find parts and accessories. Again, it's best to avoid the 6mm and the 10mm lathes for the same reasons I previously discussed above. If you're looking to buy a lathe, let's talk about the main items that you're going to need to have a complete lathe outfit. Uh, first thing we're going to identify is this is the headstock here. And some of these have ball bearings, but most of these have cone bearings. Uh, you do want to pr prefer to buy a cone bearing because they're um, much more prevalent and easier to work with. Tail stock, that's this section back here. And then you've got the bed, which is the lathe bed, which everything bolts on to. And you've got a motor. Now the motors, you want to make sure you've got one that has a reversing switch. This is not an on and off switch. It's a reversing switch. If it is an on and off switch, then it's not really what you're looking for. So you need that reversing switch. And then you're going to need some kind of speed control to control the speed of, of this, because otherwise it's going to run full, full speed all the time. You're going to need a tool rest, and here's your tool rest. You're going to need some kind of a belt to uh, run your lathe from, from the motor. And you're going to need some kind of stand to put it on. Here this one is on a what they call a Borel stand. It's an aluminum stand where your motor mounts on here, your, your lathe mounts on here. And it's very easily self-contained. And you can easily pick it up, take it off the bench. And it's actually more for convenience for people who do not have a permanent place for their lathe. So they can just pick it up put it into their uh, cabinet and then pull it out as they need it. Now, not all of them come with this aluminum stand here. So you might have a situation, so most, most of the other lathes, or at least the bottom of the lathe, like in this one here, this is a Mansfield lathe, you're going to have a foot here. Now the foot on this precision machine tool company lathe is missing because it was taken off to be attached to the uh, aluminum stand. So normally they, they have a foot here for the, that hooks onto uh, either your bench or your uh, some type of a stand. And if you look underneath here, you can see that it's bolted. This bolt comes all the way through the foot all the way into the lathe. So it's a long bolt that goes all the way through. And you need to make sure you have that bolt because if you don't have that bolt, your bed's not going to secure onto the foot. And then you won't be able to secure it onto either a stand or your bench. Here's a lathe setup that's set up on a wooden stand. Now this wooden stand is actually a cutting board that you would use in your kitchen to, uh, let's say, carve meat or fish or something of that nature. So this also makes a very excellent stand for your lathe. Uh, a little pedestal was built up here to bring the height of the lathe up as a little pedestal here uh, for this counter shaft and the motor was mounted on here. So this is also very self-contained and uh, this can be lifted and, and moved out of place. Now this is a little bit bigger than what we just previously saw but still serves the same purpose. So you can use a cutting board like this or you can you have the aluminum stands like the one I just showed you or it can be uh, bolted to the bench. 